Hello, this is Harry Heike of EverythingOscale.com and Lionel's Weathering Artist. What I'm going to show today is a group of weathered Lionel 412 twos and go over an individual unit to show exactly the things that I did to upgrade these models and to improve their appearance. All of the units were airbrush weathered and then sealed against wear and tear smoke fluid, greasy fingerprints, etc. Although it is more difficult to airbrush weather than other techniques, I feel it is worth the effort in the end, as airbrushing produces subtle changes Mimicking those found in nature. Now what I have here in the front is a weathered example. And what I've done is I've preserved one unit unweathered for comparison purposes. So this is how a boiler comes from the factory. And this is what it looks like after it's been weathered. Okay, now here are some of the things that I did. Number one, I masked off the window to preserve the glass. And I painted the armrest a leather type color prior to weathering. <clears throat> Next, using a system of masks and baffles, a number of weathering processes. Were captured. Let's start at the smoke box. As you can see the superheater is gritty and grimy and there's lines of rust coming from the joints. You can see grimes of lines of grime coming from the stack and running down the sides of the smoke box. The coupler is rusty. as are the cylinder head covers and the areas around the Gresley gear. The pony trucks are grimy with some shines of weathering. Now one of the things that I tried to do was to retain all the details applied at the factory, all the paint details but just cover them with the weathering at the same time. For example, here's a valve handle which is still appears to be red. The bell still appears to be brass. The running board sides were, came white from the factory and as you can see it's white, faded, rust, grimed, but you can tell that they were white at one time. The firebox was graphite from the factory and you can still tell a difference between the color in the firebox and the boiler. 
the tires all had white sidewalls. And as you can see, these have been preserved, but obviously they've all been weathered. The cylinder has runs of rust coming down from the access bolts and the stifter valve, along with um, white shale where water would have dripped. Each handrail stanchion has a line of rust beneath of it. as does each lagging clamp. The steam dome has lines of shale running down the side of the engine, as does the pop valves, the relief valve, the centrifugal muffler, the generator, and the turret. These are continued below as white shale lines on the sides of the smoke of the firebox. The washout plugs also have lines of rust dripping from them. The cab roof has lines of rust on the rivet seams, as well as the lines of rust coming from the running boards on the, the running rail on the hatch. There's also lines of rust coming from below the cab window. There is significant rust on the bearing areas of the truck as well as some lines of shale that would have dripped onto the truck during usage. The tender has lines of has, has an overall coating of grime. Some of the grime is darker than others to show lines of running of, from from rain. The tender truck has is grimy as well as lines of rust at the access ports and around the journals. The rivet seams all have lines of rust. The tender deck has lines of rust on the parting strips. And the hatches show signs of water shale running down the sides of the tender. There are lines of rust coming from the brackets and the stanchions on the tender, as well as some chalking from the lettering. The rear of the tender shows shale from the, which would have dripped down from the hatches, as well as lines of rust from the stanchion. Of course, the coupler is rusty, and areas of rust around the pulling pockets, which, have been, which would have been points of wear. After these small details were carefully captured, the whole model is heavily oversprayed in dull flat, particularly in the areas of the steam dome, which is also the port for smoke fluid, and around the stack, which will eventually become wetted with smoke fluid. The next area of wear is the sides of the running board, which have additional overspray so that finger pressure from lifting 
doesn't wear off the weathering over a period of time. The chassis were weathered separate from the boiler in order to spin the wheels and to even out the weathering in the areas that would have been behind the drive rods. The trucks, all the trucks and drivers were then carefully cleaned with solvent and the model reassembled, as were the tender trucks. As you can see, all the engines are very similar. The areas of weathering, some slightly more than others, but the same exact technique was used in every engine. The same sequence of applying the various weathered colors was applied in order to keep things uniform. And that completes the photo adventure of the Lionel weathered 412 2.